Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to ask this question. Do people find Linux in their pursuit of privacy or do they find privacy because they have found Linux? This is an interesting question and I'd like you to let me know in the comments below what was the way you found Linux and privacy? What was the what came first for you? And for me, uh, and actually this is a couple, I've already taken a couple takes this video, at least a couple starts. One of those is I want to do a nice beautiful take with a beautiful background. Unfortunately, it's too windy where I am, so I have to do it inside the office. Um, but what I want to mention here is in my story, I originally I was thinking, yeah, I came to privacy more because of Linux, but in reality, I came to Linux because of privacy. And maybe this is why they're so compiled together. So just briefly again on my story, I was just a lowly web developer. I was a little bit more of a computer, um, a little bit more knowledgeable on computers than your average guy, maybe even a lot more than your average guy, but not anything what I would call an expert, you know, the level of level one tech or uh, some of the guys with these Linux channels that are just absolutely amazing. I, I did not come to Linux in high school geeking out with all the Linuxy type things. Maybe if I would have, I would have been in better shape. But the fact of the matter, I was actually technically a technophobe for a while in that I didn't even use calculators. Uh, but at the end of high school, I realized, well, the world is computers. Unfortunately, as much as I hate these stupid things, I may as well buy one to be, you know, a better person in society. And that's what I did. And then I was like, okay, if I'm spending a few thousand dollars on a computer, it's going to be more than simple point and click. And so I learned how to build them, rebuild them, install drivers, reinstall operating systems, all these kinds of fun things. So this is why I was certainly not the core level of expert it wasn't my whole hobby but i wasn't just a basic average computer user either and for me i was happy and content moving along with windows adobe software all these types of things in my day-to-day -day job as a web developer until windows 10 happened now a little bit prior to this i had played around with ubuntu a little bit mostly because i had this laptop that was a really poor design and the way they built this computer, literally they, they plugged the hard drive directly into the shell of the case. If you just slid the computer across the desk, it would send all of that chakra into the hard drive. I think burned through two hard drives in six months. And so I was looking up online, can I run Windows on a USB drive? And uh, it turns out that no, you can't. Um, that was then, you can now. Uh, that was then, but I keep on finding this thing called Ubuntu. I'm like, well, let's see what this is about. And I was able to do the task that I needed that computer to do. And so that was good. And I didn't really think a lot more about it. I didn't really care. Did I boot up of that into Windows, whatever else. It was just an auxiliary application for some of the work and contracting I was doing at the time. But then when Windows 10 came out and I started seeing all of the data collection that Windows 10 was doing, and guys, Windows 10 does a lot of basic data collection. Some of it's simple diagnostics, but the fact of the matter is I don't want it to do diagnostics. I bought the computer, I bought the license, I don't want you doing diagnostics, let me turn it off. Oh, you can't? Well, then I guess I just won't use your software anymore. And so because I was into the privacy in that measure, and I wasn't in any stretch of the form a huge privacy guy at the time, I'm just, I just don't want to be bothered by my operating system. I switched to iPhone because the Android started getting too aggressive with, I had one account that required a Google account uh, set up by the company. I log into this and it tries to integrate that Google account at every aspect of the phone. Like, no, I wiped the phone, took it back and bought an iPhone instead because it's like, I don't want that crap to happen. Well, Windows was moving in that general direction and I did not like it. So I'm like, ah, I still have that Ubuntu, what is that thing? Let's find that disk floating around in my drive, right? So I go and I find that disk and I plug that disk in. I'm like, wow, this thing actually kind of worked kind of nice. Now I like Linux Mint better because it has the layout of Windows, which Windows, the layout there, I like it. Ubuntu was pretty good. It was running Unity at the time. If you're new to Linux, have a look, uh, old videos, look at Unity much better than running it based on GNOME like they're doing now, although GNOME is how they started a long time ago. However, I looked and said, well, despite not really liking the UI as much, this is definitely way better than Windows going back. And everything kind of snowballed from there. Once I figured out that there's Linux, I'm like, oh, Linux Mint, this is cool. So 
I start using Linux Mint for my production systems. I start using, um, you know, other operating systems that, that worked really well, all Linux based, uh, you know, some of them Manjaro, some of them uh, Solus I've used, I've used Ubuntu, I've used Linux Mint, Peppermint, you know, all these different builds. And because I love the privacy and reclaiming the aspect of my computer, it gave me this interest to go in further and further. And then I figure out Nextcloud. Well, let's install Nextcloud on a on a uh, cloud-based Linux server. We do this. Now I have the all those capabilities of Google Documents and Google file sharing and all these types of things without giving data to Google. I was like, well, that was kind of cool because the reality is these are useful tools in our society. And so I made this switch over there and then I start looking at VPNs. Huh. Can I just host my VPN? Sure. Can I tie a VPN into my office? Sure. And then I start looking at file serving. So I run a file server based on uh, its uh, Debian file server, the Open Media Vault. Okay, and then I'm like, well, instead of putting every file onto every computer, what if I have a centralized location that all the computers can tie into that? Wow, this really works well. And it's private and nobody's collecting data in the background nobody's doing everything and so i really jumped into the privacy world becoming more and more and more interested in the privacy elements rather than relying on the big tech companies that was gathering and harvesting and buying and selling because that's really the ultimate factor is all of these companies are using all these little tendrils of apps on phones and software and websites and online accounts and all these types of things to grab their little piece of data about you. And then they buy and sell all this data into all these different companies, buying and selling back and forth to build giant, fairly accurate profiles about you. And when people say there's no privacy on the internet, that is not true. In fact, I did a video a couple weeks ago talking about why that is not true and five steps that you can take. So have a look at that video there. However, that being said, we have to take some active steps. We're never going to be 100% private as long as we do need to interact online. But at the same time, what we do need to recognize is we can take individual little steps to maintain our privacy. And one of the first steps I mentioned in that video is looking at your operating system. So for me, I look at the operating system and looking at Linux as I do, this is just works so well for me in that it's not phoning home. It's not collecting a bunch of data. I can be confident as I'm using my system, the system itself is collecting the minimal amount of data. So in reality, I came to Linux because I was seeking some privacy and then I realized how good Linux is for privacy. And so from there, I went back and said, wow. And I doubled down and got deeper and deeper. And that is where I came to run Linux now where everything itself is so much more private and under my control. And I would like to hear from the comments down below. Did you come to Linux in your search for privacy or did you find Linux from some other means, a hobby, other interests, and then realize, wow, there's privacy here and double down on it or you're just like i don't care about privacy i just use linux because it works let me know where you lie in that camp down below and if we are mostly learning more about privacy from it how can we help the rest of the community do that even further so with that thanks for watching everybody and i hope that you enjoy switching to linux thank you for watching this video from switched to linux this channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.